Good evening, folks, and welcome to this week's episode of the Pilot Review Show. I am Captain Blade J52, and I am joined by my merry cohorts. We have our Neela Deton with us this evening. What up, Paul? Alan Z. And teacher, the Gornalicious Kirby. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How's it going out there in YouTube land? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> and everyone's favorite RP hologram that will be joining us on the map shortly, Artie. Hello. So, we've got some interesting stuff to discuss this evening with you guys and everything, especially some of the changes to the game that are going to be coming up here in just a little bit. But uh, let's go ahead and dive into our first thing. You can see here on our Twitter page to get us started, we have our information submitted to Las Vegas and we are currently waiting for that to process. So if you want to see us at Vegas, we're getting our spot reserved, getting everything processed, ready to go. Vegas, here we come. Yep. That's like a time in a row. And just remember, just remember, folks, what happens in Vegas stays, stays in on Vegas. YouTube. Oh, well, there no, you go. No, it stays on YouTube. That's true, that's true. You're right. <laughs> but in all seriousness, we'll be going. We'll be trying to get, um, be trying to get interviews. We'll be having fun. We'll be, you know streaming everybody that comes by and we did have some special guests last year just happened to walk by and they said hello to everybody and yeah it was lots of fun and we hope it'll be lots of fun again this year yeah so if you want to see us yes. out at Vegas come on down and uh, say hey to us and all that fun stuff all that good jazz. But, and as we said, if you can't make it in person, we will be streaming. Yes, absolutely. But, moving on to our next big thing, we actually have a um, breach event for our console players. Yep. And so far, basically, the reward for the breach is the Admiralty ship, the Voth VSS Tannis. So it's a nice little ship for uh, Admiralty to, for your engineering, for any missions that need high engineering skills. Um, do it, you do it 14 days, you get all 14 of the stuff to throw in the project. And you have the MOT plus the 50,000 dill, 500 fleet marks, 250, choice of any mark you want. And it's going until the 16th, which was Thursday to April 7th. Indeed. Awesome it's... sauce. If for nothing else, I usually do the events for the dilithium and the marks. They're awesome for that. Oh, yeah. And also, if you, for some reason, are going out of town or you miss a couple of days where you're not going to be able to do it, you don't have to get rid of the project. Because you can always, for the breach event, you can always do the project when it comes back around and finish it up. Yes, next year. Now, the actual ship itself is pretty good as well, like Neil was saying. If there's a certain assignment that requires a lot of engineering, a lot of tactical, a lot of science, this one I found in my experience can usually knock quite a bit of those out early on. But definitely and worth... it's special. Uh, I was going to say, definitely worth picking up, but so, um, anyway. Yeah, basically it's special ability. If you only have that ship by itself, it gets plus 50 to all its stats when it's alone. 
I've had it one time be the only ship, and it levels out all three. Uh, engineering, tech, and science. Yeah, it's very nice for that. It can do that quite easily with that plus 50 to all one along. Yep. Now one thing I will mention, since this is an Admiralty card, some people have asked this before, no, this does not give you an actual ship to fly. This is purely just a fun little something that you can use in the Admiralty. I wish it gave you the ship to fly, but sadly it does not. I know, not. right? Yeah, but... Can you imagine the turn rate? Ugh. God. It's worse than my year uh, first class. Uh. I see you take up the whole screen. screen. But, um, anyways, that's the event that uh, is going on for console players at the moment. We will have this in the notes for you guys. Next big <laughs> thing we have is our console patch notes. Mm-hmm. And the big, major big thing for the console patch notes is the Temple Transponder now functions. So I know, some people, I know some people on console were doing it Temple Asia until after it hit level 10 because it was not working. <laughs> Guilty. <So> that, <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was guilty too. I'm like, yeah, I have other characters. But... Now that that's working, you can get the rewards for each of the special things you have to do. Um, the Echoes of Light is now level 60. The turn rate for Escorts has now been fixed, so they're not as slow. And a bunch of just quality of life for UI made it easier to access your duty officers, MOT, research and development. Uh, made end game at level 50, its own separate tab, so you can get into your specializations, your reputation, PVE, uh, that much faster, and less button clicks. Same thing with the fleet. Pretty much just all quality of life stuff that was very needed. The one ma major thing that I see is there's now a change outfit option in the standard actions section of the captain's command window. You would enjoy that. Yep. Makes mm -hmm. it easier to space Barbie. Oh lord. It does. <laughs> space Barbie is true says in game. The, says the dancing Dorn. Yeah, yep. Anything else that you guys see from that? Well, uh, for the carrier players, this should be something good. Resolved an issue where carrier fighters would become unresponsive when too far away from the player's ship. Yeah, that, that, that is a good thing. Here's one that kind of makes me face... I'm not because they fixed it, but because of the issue. Resolved an issue where Delphic anti-proton beam arrays would not fire beam overload ones. I'm glad they fixed it. I can imagine how frustrated players were with that one. And devs alike. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad they uh, fixed typos and stuff like that with, uh, like, Feedback Bolts now has a more accurate description. Yes. Yep. But, pretty decent set of uh, patch notes and everything. Again, we will have all of this for you guys in our patch notes at uh, the end of the show. Everything once our local uh, recording goes up for you guys. But the next big thing we have is week five of our Temporal Agent Console Rewards. And that was so. Week five, you get your Temporal Agent task, should you choose to accept it. Complete Admiralty Assignments. And the server-wide bonus next week will be Dilithium Bonus. Ooh. So the more Admiralty Assignments you complete, the that are Temporal Agents complete, the higher the server-wide bonus is for Dilithium. And I believe you can get that up to double Dilithium, folks. 
So do those Admiralty assignments. Yep, and Yay. it's already max on Xbox. Oh, nice. Nice. Nice job, Xbox players. Sweet. PS4, get the lead out. <laughs> Xbox There's is best console. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along on PC, we are in the midst of an upgrade weekend. Yay! We live for upgrade weekends. So from Thursday, March sixteenth, until Monday, March twentieth, every tuck up tech up used but they will apply twice as many technology points towards your next upgrade so now's the time those Phoenix upgrades that you saved with all those checkpoints guess what they're gonna be doubled this weekend Woohoo! it'll probably take an item all the way to 12 it should Maybe also be noted 13. it should also be noted yes. not to interrupt sorry about that but if you have also any of the technology point boosters, such as the majors or even the one uh, one and a half times, it will also stack for a massive technology point boost. Yes, those will give you definitely the most bang for your buck right now. Uh, this is also a good time to use your Omega Tech upgrades if you don't have any of the Phoenix ones. So definitely look towards upgrading your items this weekend. And uh, have at it. Have fun with that. This is definitely a good time to uh, try and get things to gold. Epic that stuff. Absolutely. All right. Yep. And moving along, we have our PC patch notes. These were pushed out on March 16th. They're actually pretty small this week. Does anybody see anything that stands out for them? Lucari Tier 5 um, claiming the rewards? Yeah. yeah. That was... And the interesting thing is, it was fine if you just claimed it when it popped up. But if you closed it out and then went to go get it later, ain't gonna happen. But they have fixed that, so now you can close it out, move on, do whatever you want to do, and then come back and get it later. Uh, anybody else see anything? I do see a <laughs> bug that was reported that got fixed. Resolved Would that be the... Yeah. Go ahead. Resolved an issue where the Lucari Restoration Initiative reinforced Singularity Core did not get a modifier at Ultra Rare. Yeah, Ooh. that stuck out to me too. So you level it up and you didn't get your amp modifier. Now this will update existing versions as they made sure yes. to say in the notes. That's a good thing. Looks like they found some more um, some more holes in the breach. <laughs> so they fixed those. And they did extend the date of the event to the 24th. That's a holdover from last week when they had to do an emergency patch because they had blocked the entrance with a... Uh, with a wall when they were fixing some other areas. They had actually did, accidentally got a little over enthusiastic with those walls. And then the Temporal Heavy Dreadnought Cruiser appears bright white at certain instances. That's been resolved. The uh, Lucari Reputation weapons were sometimes healing enemies. Not good. But it's fixed now. Resolve an issue that caused the proto matter capacitor starship trait to affect more than just passive shield regeneration. So it was doing active shield regeneration as well. Alrighty. And that's all the PC notes. Now we're moving it right along to Artie. Okay. Bringing us up to uh, the costume sale, 20% costume sale, which started this past Thursday and it will end Monday, uh, March 20th. Uh, simple enough, 20% off uh, your co favorite costumes and all that, so get them when you can. And this is on PC, right? Yes, PC. This is uh, console, actually. 
Oh, console, actually. Oh, console. Oops, my bad. I'm, I apologize there. <laughs> I missed it right at the top. My bad. Yep. This brain fart right. brought to you by Xbox yeah. One. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. And Teacher Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look either. Okay. Okay. Uh, bring us up to our next piece of the 15% pack sale. I'm starting with the Xbox One section. Uh, for this, uh, on Xbox One, the sale will be taking place in the in-game uh, C-Store, all right? Uh, the discounted, uh, each pack will be discounted by 15%, obviously, uh, from 9 a.m. on March, 7th, uh, March 17th through 10 a.m. Uh, of March 21st. Uh, this includes, like, the Starfleet pack, the Empire pack, and the Legacy pack, so you can get all the Dromulan Klingons and Federation Starships that you can. All right. Uh, moving on to the next one, which is the PC version. Uh, this, these packs are the Temporal Special Agent, the special, the Temporal Agent Starter Pack, the Delta Pack, the Legacy Pack, and the Romulan Starter Pack. Uh, these will also be 15% off, starting at the same time as March 17th to, through March 21st. And uh, lastly, for the PlayStation 4, it is. Very much similar to the Xbox version. You'll have it from March 17th to March 21st. And it would be the same three packs. The Starfleet pack, the Empire pack, and the Legacy pack. So, that's there about it. All in, this, all in it, the Zen store. It is important to note the PC is actually not in the Zen store. You have to go to the ARC website. Ooh, right. I did miss yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta make sure it's you're not gonna get in the C store. You will see them available, but not at a discounted price. Correct. So you have to go to the ARC website and get it through there for actual cash. Yep. So yeah, we were discussing that at my team speak just the other day. Go well, then. Yep. All right, and now we're back to Chris. Yep. Alrighty, so we wanted to save this stuff for um, towards the end of the articles that we go over. Now, a lot of people have seen the blog now talking about the details on space balance changes that are coming. Now, this was announced on the 14th and everything with the patch hitting just a day or two ago. And Spartan put up a blog talking about basically some of the overview of it. We actually have some of the patch notes for you guys that um, we can take a look at. One big thing is all engineering consoles that previously gave kinetic and energy damage resistance now just give an all damage resist rating. So all consoles that uh, previously just gave kinetic damage resist also give a magnitude of physical damage resist. So that is a couple of things such as this as far as balance changes we can see. For carrier players, all player carrier pets are now immune to warp core breaches. So if you're somebody that loved to fly a carrier, your ships were always uh, hugging an exploding cube. That's one big thing that now you don't have to worry about. Now, the other big things that people were concerned about were some of the major changes such as fire at will, the go down fighting, a lot of other powers like that. And I actually do have some numbers from Tribble for you guys and everything. I've been theory crafting with some folks as well as testing things for bugs. So if you're curious as to what the numbers are going to look like, because the patch notes did mention a bit of a nerf to fall. Let's see if I can actually fire or find it here. Fire at will now has a slight damage penalty and accuracy penalty at each rank. So as far as the numbers on Tribble, for fire at will 3, it does 90% of your base damage and is a 30% accuracy reduction. Fire at will 2 is 85% base damage and 40% accuracy reduction. Now, Fire at Will 1 is 80% base damage and 50% accuracy reduction. Now, that may seem like a pretty hefty penalty, 
but the good thing is the accuracy can be negated by actually picking up a few traits such as the accuracy traits, the approved uh, predictive algorithms, things like that. So that is a major change that I did want to point out for folks. Let's see, where's another good one? The subnucleonic beam change. This is something that science captains have been, uh, some of them anyway, kind of iffy about. Subnucleonic beam is no longer a science captain power. Science captains now gain deflector overcharge instead of subnucleonic beam as they level up. New power boost uh, provides exotic damage, shield healing, and additionally boosts control X and drain X while it is active. So for science captains, that is essentially your version of attack pattern alpha now with this change. The subnucleonic beam, since it has been changed to a bridge officer power, you can unlock that at lieutenant commander and on up. But we have been testing as well some of the other abilities. The plasma exploders have uh, pretty much taken a huge hit. Yeah. They no longer ignore shields. Then their damage uh, goes to the shields, then eventually to the hull. They've had their damage nerfed by up to 75%. And on top of that, they now proc per cycle instead of just uh, per, per shot. shot like they used to. Right. So, to give you an example, um, normally we're getting on a high-end run, and I'm talking an 80k plus run. Um, which is what I'm usually doing, I can expect at least 15k out of my plasma exploders. Okay? And that's with three. Okay, on my, on my main ship. When I went on Tribble and did a couple runs, I barely got 200 DPS out of those same plasma consoles. I had changed nothing on my build, I just wanted to see what, you know, what I would get. And I got 81k and literally almost nothing out of the plasma exploder consoles. So they're, uh, they might be good for playing with your threat, they might be good for boosting a stat here or there, but they're not going to give you DPS in the in the sense of giving you a lot of extra damage over what you're already doing. Yep. Now, the other thing for the consoles we would like to point out, you know, as far as the other alternative that a lot of people like to use to the plasma exploders were the ones from the Crenum Science Lab, such as the exotic particle focusers. Those have been changed a bit as well to where now they only give exotic damage. So they're not nearly as good for everybody else as they were previously. So if you're somebody like me, you don't really use a lot of exotic abilities and everything, that's something that is going to kind of suck. But at the same time, that opens up other possibilities for you to use as well. I personally have gone back to using a lot of universal consoles. I know I've brought back my assimilated module and my zero point at the moment as a way of uh, offsetting for that, and I'm not really seeing too much of a difference in all honesty once I've made the conversion and everything. Now the other major change we did want to point out is feedback pulse. The damage reflection can no longer critically hit. The percentage of reflected damage no longer scales with damage bonuses. The percentage reflected is now capped at 50%, 75%, or 100% based on the rank. And the default reflect amount is now significantly lower at each rank. So, basically what this means, no more going into a run and dropping a million DPS with 250k of that being feedback pulse. No more cheesing threat mechanics. 
to get all the threat and then smack them for up to 500% of their damage with a feedback pulse. So right. the old metas as we knew it with purely plasma exploders and feedback pulse is going the way of the dodo. Now the ability can still be used but it's not going to give you nearly as much damage as before. You might get between 5 to 10k out of it at max that we're noticing so far. Yep. Now it is also important to note that, and I'm reading a, uh, a quote here on the forums, that these are going to be on Tribble for for a while, so that he can get so that they can get feedback and uh, and make changes as needed. So it does says this is going to be on Tribble long enough for a long enough time that they're planning on doing second set of balance changes after they get feedback. So go on Tribble, test, you know, give your feedback, make sure things are working. If they're not, give them that feedback on the forum, you know, as you need to. But test, figure things out. And the big thing is, don't panic. Don't grab your pitchfork and your torches yet. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Like I say, there is a lot to these changes. We do realize that. It is easy to, especially when it affects your build and everything, for people to panic and be like, hey, why the heck are you nerfing me? This sucks. Everything. But... In the long run, it will be a lot better off. Everything. But, a um, couple more changes I do want to point out, because these are some major powers that a lot of people like to use. The Recursive Shearing Damage Reapply is now 15%, 22.5%, or 30% of the damage dealt based on rank. Now has a base cooldown of 40 seconds. The Subspace Vortex and Gravity Well, their damage uh, dealt has been decreased, and now they have a target cap of 25 enemies. So, a lot of stuff is getting changed. Everything. Then we have the OSS. The random subsystem offline caused when it ends is now 5 seconds at all ranks and can no longer be resisted or removed. So now you actually have to eat the debuff and everything whereas you didn't have to do so before. Couple which Oh go ahead. Which may make OSS a little less popular. Yes. You know, I mean you, there's no way to shorten it, there's no way to get rid of it, and there's a one in four chance it's gonna hit your weapons. So just be aware when using OSS, so, it it is one thing that could end up being a double edged sword. Yes. But the next big thing that we have is the probability manipulation. I know the ultimate abilities were one question that I did get some stuff about. And we have the notes for you guys. The probability manipulation thing says, The probability penetration unlock now gives a chance to gain a stacking armor penetration buff. The probability window has been removed and replaced with the probability collapse, which gives a flat accuracy in defense buff for the duration. So now it's not going to last nearly as long, and you are going to have just a little bit of armor pin to it. So, Science Ultimate, not going to be nearly as powerful as it was before. Useful, sure, perhaps, but nowhere near it once was. Now this one is one that actually surprised me. This is the EPS Corruption. It says, the damage increase from Enhanced Corruption is now the EPS Corruption's default damage. The Enhanced Corruption has been replaced with Ablative Corruption, which, uh, which sets the target's hull and uh, regeneration to zero and halves their incoming healing, and can no longer be cast on a target afflicted by EPS Corruption. So, no more stacking all of these abilities on top of each other. So, if you're going up against an enemy that has a lot of healing, has a lot of uh, incoming 
types of buffs. This is one thing you can throw on them to slow down their healing. That pretty much shuts out their whole regeneration and cuts their healing in half, as it says. Very, very potent. So you might start seeing a few people using the engineering ultimate out there. It's one possibility you'll have. Then, Focused Frenzy, that was also changed as well. Buff can now be gained by firing projectile weapons as well as energy weapons, so that is a bit of a plus. The bonus damage is now only weapon bonus damage. The haste bonus is now only 4% per stack instead of 8% per stack. And the cooldown reduction from Frenzied Reactions is now 1 second, but only has a chance to trigger each time you shoot the target. So that is a very major change to the ability and everything to keep in mind. The other ones, I know we're spending a lot of time on the notes and everything for folks out there, but um, we do want to get this information out there to you guys, especially some of the more important ones, because it can take, it's going to take a lot of testing for you guys to get what you want to use as your new spec. And we want to make sure you have as much information as possible. For your control amplification, it now applies a minus 25 resistance to exotic damage and control effects, so this is no longer an across the board thing. The weapon specialization now gives 4% weapon critical severity at 100. It used to be 6, so a slight hit there. The weapon amplification now gives 40% at a critical so, uh, 100 critical severity skill, up from 20. So though, or that value was actually doubled in the skill tree. Then the shield weakening has been replaced with shield penetration, which gives you an additional 5% bleed through once you max it out to the shields, which is very, very potent. But um, any particular notes um, that you guys noticed in this before I do my final one? No. Not me. Um, I mean, there's so many. It's it's really hard to pick just one. There's so so many. I mean, there's it's hard to find an ability or a thing that isn't being touched in some way. Yep. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you could almost say that Beam Overload is being, is being buffed while um, Fire at Will is being nerfed. Cannons are getting their firing cycles changed. And, you know, I mean... It's really hard to find something that isn't being touched in some way, shape, or form. So I can't stress enough going under Tribble and testing. Definitely. Yeah. Now, the one final change I will point to, especially for my tanks out there, everything with the plasma consoles not being out there and everything, you might have a little bit of a harder time not having that uh, extra threat generation at first but like I say just kinda swap to universals and everything you should be good the big thing is the regenerative integrity field change this is the console that came from the Kobali Samsar now the base healing amount has been slightly decreased and the heal over time can't proc as many times, but has an increased minimum and maximum heal amount. Overall, essentially what they're doing is they're giving you a little bit less health up front in the form of the burst heal, and you heal a bit more over time as the console procs. I noticed in my case that on holodeck I'm getting about 18,000 healing up front, and about... 2,000 maximum heal. Then on Tribble, I'm getting about 10,000 healing up front with about a 3,500 healing each time it procs. So basically what that did was bring it in line with the Lucari console so that either one is a very viable choice. 
but as far as our patch notes go, that's the first set that we have. We'll take a quick look at the second set, which was basically bug fixes and everything. So, there's actually... where is that one at? They had... So, if you're somebody that uses the prototype ablative Jevonite hardpoints, it uh, no longer goes away when you die. So that's a very big quality of life change that's uh, implemented courtesy of uh, Sir Cryptic Spartan. But uh, basically this second set is just bug fixes and various things like that. But uh, definitely as Kirby was saying... Oh, go ahead. We have a question of uh, Twitch chat. Uh... What the hell is the cycle rate for can cannons about? <laughs> so they're increasing the firing rate. Well, they're not. They're changing it. It was two seconds. They're changing it to five seconds for the firing cycle. I'm trying to find exactly where it says this. Let's see. Because I was just looking at it. This is what I get for reading through the forum while we're here. While we're on the air. Oh, okay, it, low uh, three, it was from three seconds, and it's going up to five seconds, cycle time, for cannons. So it basically puts it more in line with the beams. Yeah, that's the major difference. Yeah. It's, it was usually four seconds for beams, cannons being three, so this allows yeah. cannons in terms of shots out a slight edge. Yep, and it is not it is not intended to decrease their DPS. You can of course go on to triple and test it out. And if you're seeing a decrease in the DPS of your cannons, specifically, and of course you have to make sure that it's not something else, um, then definitely go ahead and report that. Yeah, like I say, there's a lot of stuff that's getting changed, as Teacher Kirby said. There's a lot of systems that are some type of something happening, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Definitely go on Tribble, uh -huh. check it out, get your testing in. That way, you know, okay, when this goes live, I want to do X, Y, and Z with my ships. And that way, you're not having to scramble last minute to try to figure something out. Go on there and test it, give them feedback. If there's a bug, let them know. Feel free to hit me up and say, hey, this is bugged out on Tribble. I can throw up a report for you guys everything but yeah definitely definitely check that stuff out but anyways I suppose moving on to our next thing we have is um, should actually be our budget build for the week yay budget build now, this is actually a bit of a rehash of one that myself and Kirby did a while back. This is a slight change on the No EC Scimitar build. Everything that we did. God only knows how we managed that. Now, the original person wanted a <laughs> T5U Scimitar budget build. They wanted it to focus more on DPS. Now, since the new patch is coming, we figured we would do one in the spirit of the new patch. Some of the things that you're going to need. We did go with phasers for this because of the mods that you can get off of the Everything Old is New mission. Which is the DMG times 2 phasers. We also utilized the Quantum Phase Beam Array. As far as our weapons goes. We also utilized the Quantum Phase Set, which isn't something we normally do. Then, since that set does not have a warp core on its own, we went with the 
Temporal Phase Overcharged Singularity Core. So this is the Singularity Core version for Romulans. And also includes the capacitor. So if you're familiar with the Temporal Negotiator, that is something you will be able to obtain. As far as in the form of a capacitor. For devices, we had the Subspace Field Modulator. And also a red matter capacitor, thanks to the Phoenix uh, prize pack, bringing that back around. Now, we also have the quantum phase converter. This is a very nice little console. Also had a RCS accelerator that dropped from one of the missions. And we also have an enhanced neutronium with EPS to boost his power generation a little bit. As far as the tactical consoles, we had five of those from one of the new missions. Of Signs of Importance, I believe, is where we got the tactical consoles. I think so. But all that stuff's in the notes for the build itself. I'm just trying to remember without uh, actually having to look, because lazy. For the science consoles and everything, I did change them up a little bit. This is where the major changes actually start to take place. Since now the plasma consoles aren't really going to do anything for you, I went with three of the universal consoles. We brought back the assimilated module, because this gives some crit chance as well as a bit of crit severity, and is a very nice console to have. We also went with the zero point console for the critical chance that it gives, as well as a few other buffs. And also, on the cheap end, a Bio Neural Gel Pack for the Bridge Officer cooldowns that it gives. May not be the greatest amount of bonus ever, but it is a very nice console to have on the cheap end. Yes. Then, as far as... Uh, take a look at our skills. Now, I did change the specializations around, because this is going to be a very big thing. Since we're going into the new patch... The temporal operative powers aren't going to be as potent as they were. We went back with intelligence as primary, and we did keep our strategist as secondary. Now, strategist in and of itself is still going to have a lot of good bonuses. We'll still have um, some good abilities for you to draw from. However, a couple of powers just won't be as potent as they were before, is the major changes. Right. Yep, specifically um, Temporal Operative, the Entropic Rider that was very popular and one of the big reasons for Temporal Operative. Um, it's now giving its, uh, its proc per cycle instead of per shot. So that cuts it down quite, uh, quite a bit. And uh, for the tactical captains, the continuity uh, proc at the, on the tier 4 of the temporal operative, now continuity will lock out your go down fighting as a tactical captain, so you will have an issue there, um, which could prevent a decent low hull go down fighting and could then lower your DPS potential. Uh, it, should be, it should be noted one thing, since Kirby, I'm actually glad she brought that up, is um, suppose you are a tactical captain, you have the invincible trait. You have the continuity ability. Even if you have the uh, a good day to die trait, until invincibility and continuity do their thing, like the full time up, and they lock themselves out. Even with a good day to die, you will not be able to use your go down fighting at all. So that is a complete lockout. Yes. But um, as far as space skills go, since they made some major changes to the actual um, skills themselves and everything as well as the way a lot of powers worked. I did mix it up a little bit. Instead of just a science ultimate, I changed it up to account for the need of accuracy as well as some of the new skills. For the lieutenant, we've maxed out our 
energy training. We've also put a little bit in the shield capacity and healing to balance the build out a little bit. User now we, joined your channel. We have picked up a uh, another guest in the channel. We have our improved uh, EPS flow. Yes. Hello. I didn't interrupt anything, did I? We're still <laughs> on the air. Oh. <laughs> surprise! Yep. So surprise! Surprise oh, from uh, Timberwolf uh, dropping down. Oh God! Get that spotlight off of me! Oh my God! <laughs> Too bright! <laughs> All the spotlights. Oh no! Wait, wait! It's bright out here. Oh. <laughs> but yes, you're well, welcome to stick around, bro. We're just discussing things. Uh, it's it's fine. I'm about to I'm about to jump off. I was just ju jumping in to say hey to everybody. Um, <laughs> probably broke a few more things on Tribble. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Uh, um, yeah, see, but it's gonna be fun. The, he's the chief reason that Chris gets aneurysms. He oh is. God, yeah. It, it's yeah. He is. He really. I've is. broken just today. I've broken no more than four things on Tribble um, with the new patch. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Yeah. Between um, <sighs> his ability as a test monkey and my brain, we've probably broke, I would say, 95% of dribble at this point. Oh, God, yeah. I Gotta go it. for that last 5% because, you know, perfectionism. Well, you know, if you go on, you go big. But yep. continuing on with our budget build and everything with some of the changes as um, we were saying we did pick up some accuracy in the new tree to negate some of the offset of the fall uh, uh, debuffs. debuffs thank you words yeah. words hard also threw in a little extra defense value for our original pilot so he can check that out also updated him with some of the ablative abilities. We also have the advanced shield hardness. We did max out the new weapon amplification and the weapon specialization so he will have a bit more stats to work with in that aspect. We maxed out long-range targeting sensors because distance penalty. Yay! We've also maxed out uh, the shield bleed through. We also kept the power generation abilities because he is a Romulan, and power can be an issue for a Romulan, which is a big yes. thing. Yes. Then for our... Now, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I would probably take a point out of the drain expertise, because drain expertise is not going to affect leech anymore so um it's not going to be something that most are specking into but i might take a point out of that and put back the um the warp core efficiency because this is going to give a good bonus to the uh the power systems that are set be that are set um under 75 that are set at like 15 and that are set at that low power level, it's going to give a nice good boost to them. And since power level management is going to be a real thing now, I might change that up. But uh, just something to consider. Indeed, it is a very viable option that you do have. And we do like to give a little back and forth banter on these builds, that way we can yes. explore all of the options you do have, because it would be a very big disservice if we didn't explain all of the options you have available. Exactly. Now for our bridge officer skills, I didn't really see too much of a need to change a lot around on here. As far as our lieutenant science, we have a science team too. Gives a little bit of shield healing as well as purging certain science debuffs, such as the subnucleonic effect. We also have our hazard emitters, which also will now remove damage over time effects under the new system. 
So it did get a bit of a buff for our yep. Lieutenant Engineering. We have one copy of Emergency to Weapons 1 and a Engineering Team 2 for a little bit of healing and everything. Then for our Ensign Universal we had a duplicate Emergency Power to Weapons 1. This enables the person to keep the ability up a lot more often, have something to use. Actually, with two copies of Emergency Power to Weapons, it keeps it up 100% of the time. As long as you keep on it and uh, keep activating it whenever it's available. Yes. For yeah. tactical powers, we did double up on a good number of them. We have two copies of the Tactical Team 1. This purges certain debuffs as well as automatically redirecting the shields to where they're needed. We have duplicate attack pattern betas, as well as duplicate fall threes. And then our final tactical power is an omega three. So this helps to ensure that you're going to have a attack pattern available at most times, if not all of the time, depending on how the exact timers work everything but as um, far as our bridge officer powers that's pretty much what we had but so uh, with the changes to the actual build itself our EC still remains intact as a full 2 million EC budget now since we are using a couple of reputation consoles now the build time for the ship itself did increase to one week purely due to the dilithium refinement uh, times. But we included in the notes where you can pick up everything. So, yeah, that's pretty much our budget build for this week. Everything in the spirit of the new system. Yes, and I think you did add accuracy into oh, yes, the Oh yes, I uh, might want to show traits. That is one traits. thing I brain farted. Yeah. So, and I believe you also added the beam barrage as well. Yeah, we have the beam barrage and we also have the accurate. This is um, one of the traits you're going to want to pick up to help offset the accuracy. As far as our starship traits, we have the unconventional tactics because it is still a nice little bonus you can pick up from strategist. We've switched to improved predictive algorithms from Intel. That way we can have another little bit of accuracy. And then we still have our best defense, as well as our point-blank shot, both from the House Peg mission. Now the major change that I made to the space rep was to pick up tactical precision in place of the AUX offensive. Now once you pick up the fifth space reputation slot, you could pick up the AUX offensive again. However, I felt until you get that, the accuracy is going to be more beneficial to you, especially with the accuracy reductions that were put in place. Active reputations, we have the anti-time entanglement singularity, which is still a fairly decent ability, fairly nice to have. Biomolecular Shield Generator, still a very nice little defensive power. And the Quantum Singularity Manipulation, which is still a fairly decent boost to your science powers and everything. And finally, the Deploy Sensor Interference Platform, more as an, oh crap, I'm going to die button. <laughs> and then I always prefer, instead, I always prefer not to have the, the platform and prefer the Nukara. Tier 5 won the Refracting Tetrion Cascade. Yes. So that comes down to personal choice, though. Yeah. You do have some flexibility with your traits, with your powers and everything. Such as Kirby was saying, if there's any of those powers you prefer to swap out, mix and match as you need, then absolutely. But now, officially, that's, I believe, everything to do with our budget build. Because brain fart. Yep, that sounds like everything. But, as far as um, budget build goes, that's everything we have for the buggy corner. Everything, there are a couple of bugs on Tribble. 
one of which is the tactical fleet not getting the critical bonuses that it is um, supposed to have at just the moment. There is a report on that one that uh, I've placed. Everything. There's also, um, as far as the new science power goes, there's a couple of people reporting having some issues with the deflector overcharge. Everything, so if you're seeing any types of bugs like that, any types of bugs at all, like I say, speak up on the forums, let the devs know, go to the PS4, the Xbox, the PC, whichever subform it is, just say, you know, hey, I'm having this bug, this is what it's doing, this is how I get it to show up. If you've got screenshots or videos, that's even better. But, um, as far as bugs go, most of... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, Timber is laughing maniacally at you in chat. Yeah, he is. <laughs> well, he's one of the guys that originally reported the uh, TAC fleet issue to me, so... Uh-huh. But, uh, as far as bugs go, folks, a lot of my... Uh, testing ability and everything for this week is going to be focused on Tribble. Hopefully trying to stamp out any bugs for you guys before everything goes live. Everything. But, um... It's pretty much what we've got words, for bugs. I was, I was going to say, in other words, he's got a big can of raid. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, like like I say, you folks out there, I've got the, I've got the can of raid. Y'all just got to tell me where to point it to. So... It's pretty much what we have for our uh, buggy corner this week. Not um, too awful much to really go over and everything, but um, might have a few things I can help you all with next week. But this brings us in to uh, Teacher's Corner this week, where we have the introduction to weapon modifiers. Yes, so last week I did console modifiers. So this week I thought it would be nice to do User weapons modifiers. So I go in and I explain the four standard weapon modifiers and then of course all the extra crafted weapons modifiers and what they each mean, how they'll help you, all of that good stuff. So it's a nice little introduction for people that are trying to figure out what all these little letters at the end of my weapon freaking mean. <laughs> so, comments, thoughts? Sounds pretty good. I can hear the crickets chirping. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah>. what? <laughs> <laughs> there they go. Wake up, Marty. You're next. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's um. Definitely check out Teacher's video. We'll have the link in the description for you guys, so you can check that out. And especially if you're somebody that's um still trying to learn what some of the modifiers do and everything, I definitely advise giving it a listen. But the next. Did they end Sorry, I was going to say, did the engineer remember to check Artie's hearing? <laughs> no, I'm still losing it, I swear. Okay. I don't know, man. Okay. So, okay. Final, final segment for the evening is the RP Corner with Artie, and we have in-game console explanation for RP. Take it away, Sir Artie. Okay, so my fleet has recently been... Oh, Sorry no, about that, my... It. <laughs> my mic decided to disconnect immediately. My bad. Um, okay, so my fleet decided to have a little conversation the other night about, hey, if these if our ships that we get from the Zen store is ships that we can use in character and all that, do we get the special console that come with it? Does this mean we can have our Intrepid decked out with full super armor and all that? So I decided to take a small group of those consoles that were going to be easy enough to explain in a short amount of time and uh, toss them at you guys and see what you guys think. First up is the Starfleet cloaking device. We know the Romulans have them implemented all across their ships. The Klingons, same thing with them. Besides, I think their, uh, their carrier, I believe, the Voku or something like that. I'm not too sure. Well, as you know, Starfleet 
uh, cloaking devices are only implemented on specific ships like the battle cruiser, the dreadnought, the the uh, galaxy class dreadnought, stuff like that. The Defiant as well. The Defiant, but, yes. Yeah, but the only uh, what we get from the path to 2409, as you see in the uh, Starfleet Academy, uh, little quizzes and stuff like that. The lore behind it is that the Federation president of our current uh, timeline has agreed that when Romulus was was destroyed by the Hobus event, that we were that the Federation was still going to adhere to the Treaty of Alderaan. So we were not going to be able to build any cloaking devices. And this is where things still get a little bit of a skew because we are still able to use cloaking devices for some reason. This comes from a little explanation I found in reading the information of the cloaking devices. Apparently, uh, the cloaking devices for Starfleet vessels have, uh, they're not allowed to be used on every ship, obviously, for certain reasons, but they're implemented on specific ships, as the ships I've explained just a moment ago. Uh, not only as this, you know, some people going, oh, that's just cryptic, just wanting to make sure we can get money's worth, and so you can make it look like your Defiant is the actual Defiant from uh, DS9. I'm like, well, if you have an idea, this is where it's actually going in the right direction. Since uh, we've uh, been allowed to use cloaking devices, I'm pretty sure we're not up to date with current cloaking tech compared to like the Klingons or the Romulans. But we have something very similar. Maybe we're a couple decades behind in how strong their cloaking devices are. We're definitely nowhere near uh, firing torpedoes while cloaked or even firing all weapons and have shields while cloaked. We're nowhere near that, for sure. But to make sure that we can still use it, uh, we put it in some of our faster, battle-hardened vessels. We're not going to put it on any uh, dinky uh, science vessel. So it makes sense. For the next... Uh, uh, for my next console, comes from the Kelvin Timeline box, the Mining Drill Laser Emitter. Uh... Some people have gone to me and gone, hey, uh, why would I have the need of such a giant uh, uh, beam to fire at any ships? And I'm like, well, think of it this way. Have a, maybe you're flying around in a old uh, Constitution or something, or maybe a Miranda, or, you know what, let's make it easier and say you're flying the Tuffley Freighter. Your ship has been decked out for mining. Now you have a, me a reason for using that drill. And if you get into combat, it becomes a really good drill. <laughs> So, there's that. That was an easy one, apparently, compared to the other one. Now we get into a little bit closer away from uh, the lore reasoning and just to, hey, it looks cool. Can I use it? Uh, the fluidic phase decoupler. You know this as you see um, many uh, Undine bioships deciding to go, yeah, this battle's getting kind of weird, so I'm going to dip back into my little area and then come back somewhere else behind you. It, your, this console does more or less the same thing. Some people have gone with, yeah, you're not going to see this on any starship ever that's Romulan, Klingon, or Federation, unless it has special reasons. Um, as you see in one of the uh, in-game missions, Fluidic Dynamics, your, uh, a task force of uh, allied ships go into fluidic space. So the idea is that those ships may have something similar to the fluidic phase decoupler. It won't go as perfect, but you may get the same result. Another idea was that maybe my ship is some experimental uh, subspace submarine, basically. You dip into this fluidic pocket, you can fire your torpedoes out, it pops out of this fluidic pot uh, pocket, and it takes out its target, and they can just come back to the surface in space. Instead of being, you know, halfway in fluidic space and not really in normal space. It's It gets all sorts of weird uh, R RP ideas for that console. All right. Uh, is everyone following along so far? <laughs> yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm sounding like I'm rambling. I'm just making sure no one's uh, dozed off. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one you can uh, get from one of the TOS ships, the M6 computer. The uh, idea behind this is obviously we know of the original M computer from the TOS series, but... Why would uh, any of our current ships have the M6 computer or anything like it? A friend of mine has a idea that 
his uh, M6 computer actually isn't the M6 computer, but is dubbed the M7 computer. So it's a little bit upgraded from what we originally had in, seen in TOS and with the M6 computer. It does the same idea of what it does. It helps out with the firing cycle. Uh, it helps out with healing a little bit, accuracy, all that uh, wonderful stuff. But the reasoning behind it is that Starfleet needed a, another edge against enemies. So we're just like, hey, why don't we uh, take an upgrade to what we already have and implement it to specific ships? Not every ship, but uh, pick out one, uh, one or two of each class and said, hey, use this. If this doesn't work, send it back. And that's why we, uh, some of us can use the M6 computer. That's just one of many ideas. Now the last one I'm going to get at is uh, a very simple and you're going to be like, why in the world is this even on this list? The point defense system. Not the torpedo system, just the normal one from the uh, Armitage, I believe. No, the other one, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's the one that the, the, can the phaser cannons or destructor if you got the console box for the uh, KDF. Uh, the idea behind it is that not every ship would have these dozens of little cannons scattered across your ship to take out incoming torpedoes or fighter squadrons and all that. But think back to, say, the Dominion War. Galaxy classes were huge. They were the capital ships of the fleet. And in this day and age, they still kind of are. Maybe we needed something to go against smaller enemies that had fighter capability. So instead of having uh, your giant ship going in with uh, other ships, you have your ch giant ship going in with its cannons and torpedoes and whatnot and go, hey, if there's any small craft coming, we already got this prepared down pat. We'll just uh, throw up an AA system and uh, take them down when they get near. That's how it works. Easy enough. It's the same way as you use it in game. But each reason behind it for the role for role playing slightly differs depending on the ship. Maybe your ship is a, a small Nova class uh, ship, so you're saying your ship is just a specific uh, fighter destroyer or corvette destroyer kind of thing. It's not a, you know, I'm going to pick a fight with this giant dreadnought over here. Or maybe you are that giant dreadnought and you have this system and you go, well, if any small ships come my way to try to uh, torpedo bomb me, I'm just going to go, ha, ah, have fun with this and fire back. It It's very simple but it works out some way there you go so basically it has to be some reason that makes sense yeah. in in the how do I want to say that, in the world of your character more or less correct you can't just go with I'm going to fly around with a Miranda and strap a, a, a cloaking device to it for one you actually cannot do that for in-game reasons, but two, why would a Miranda ever need a cloaking device? When you said strap something to it, I thought you were going to say a Boolean cannon. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just came why would you strap real. that to it? <laughs> why would you strap because that Boolean to it? Because Boolean cannons are awesome. You have a good point. <laughs> in game, uh, not in game. Uh, uh, in character, one of my uh, small craft, which is been redubbed to be a wave rider from the uh, the small uh, the small ship from the uh, I can't remember it's name. it's an alternate version of the Aero shuttle from the Intrepid, okay. but um, it has those uh, cannons on it. It uses them for uh, like you would see in like Vietnam. You have helicopters flying in. You got guys sitting on these giant bay doors on the side ho holding on to these uh, dinky cannons, just firing at people below. Now imagine that a ship, uh, a shuttle come by, people open up the side doors, and someone just pulls out a boolean and just starts firing and uh, firing at the enemy. Awesome. You're, you have nothing against it. You're going to look at this going, <laughs> no, I'm done. I'm backing out. I'm no longer a bad guy. <laughs> I can see that. So you, well, there is some reasoning behind that, it. Yeah, basically what that is is a version of the Star Wars lat. Basically. And now I have started a whole new trend in RP. Though I, I do hope <laughs> that the like the M6 and M7 computers like don't have the issues the M5 did. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
just, just, just making sure, you know, because we don't want those things gallivanting about the galaxy trying to yeah. nuke every poor, unfortunate soul. Yep. Another <laughs> you you joke about another friend of mine. So <laughs> another friend of mine has uh, so, uh has a actual good reason of using the uh, vengeance in game, saying it's a a was a, a prototype type of dreadnought that was just mothballed, similar to how the Defiant was during its early days. And we brought it back out after the Iconian War, since we had no ships more or less that war that wasn't completely destroyed. So. They were like, you know what? Why did what? What was this a prototype? Well, it had something dubbed the M9 computer. M9. What does that do? Oh, it just does the usual things like the M5, M6, whatever else. And apparently, it giggles and curses. It does what? <laughs> well. Don't let it near any science experiments. Why? You know those lab rats? What lab rats exactly? <laughs> <laughs> well. Wow. Be a good time to be a fly on the wall to that conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes, for role-playing and specific consoles, you you would need to come up with a good enough reason. Um, it also somewhat goes to weapons and stuff like that, but that's a different conversation altogether. Stick in the consoles. If you have a good idea for it, bring it up, and I may be able to help you out with a reason for it. So, there we go. Sounds like a fun plan. That's pretty much our show for this evening, folks. Everything, and uh, as always, if you would like to help us get back out to Vegas, then we still have our GoFundMe and everything. Any little bit does help, and we are grateful for any and all help that you guys are willing to give, even if it is just spreading the word and everything. But, so... Um, We've got information submitted for tables, everything, and, um, sorry, teacher. I was gonna say, it does cost money. Um, GoFundMe is set up to pay for the, um, the power, the internet, etc. for our, uh, for our tables. So, definitely, any help you can give is appreciated. Yes. Definitely spread the word. If you'd like to see us uh, back out at Vegas, then uh, like I say any and all help is greatly appreciated, even just spreading the word. But anyways, that's what we have for this evening, folks. Hope you've uh, found the information of use as we continue to get more information about the triple changes and that stuff gets updated. We'll try to bring it to you guys and everything. But um, hopefully you've enjoyed our show for this evening. For now, folks, this is Pilot Review, and we are signing off. Later, Gator. See you guys.